Your first word here is going to be Chavin de Juantar. And for form, you need to remember that these are stone buildings that were carved into the mountainside. For function, you have not only a city, but a religious city, the religious capital of the original older South American cultures. For content, obviously, since this is a religious city, you have religious rooms for rituals, graves. That lanzon is very important, goes here under content. And the mazes, of course, underneath the mountains where the lanzon would be located. For context, the location of Chavin is in between two rivers, which their joining represents a symbol of religious power. It was a pilgrimage site for people to visit and hear the voice of the God. Remember we watched the video of that conch shell being played in class. That voice is supposed to come from the God that lives inside the Lanzon. Another important thing you need to remember is that competing realities, the human and animal factors together, where this jewelry comes in that the priest would wear. Is he human? Is he animal? We don't know, and it adds to that mystery of the religious function of Chavin de Juantar. Next, you have the Mesa Verde Cliff Dwellings located in Colorado. These are stone buildings that are carved out of the cliffside, but also built onto it. For function, you need to know this is a public space, a city where people would actually be living, not a religious capital, and this space is for everyone, not just for the elite. We know that because of the kinds of rooms and artifacts that we found there, including the observatory, which is the highest spot in the city, and your storage areas and your cooking areas and all of these public natural normal spaces that you would have from houses. For context, you do need to know it was located or is located still in Colorado and that the dwellers left it when the Mesa was not verde anymore. So we had a drought or some kind of natural phenomenon that caused them to abandon the city. And here you have Yaxchilan. You need to know lintel 25 and structure 23. For form, you have stone. And for function, these buildings are going to show the power of the patron. And while the buildings are important, the lintels are more important than the actual structures. And they're going to show power through religious ritual. That is their function. For content, what the picture actually contains is text and images together. And in this one, you have the queen having a vision through drug-induced rituals uh, with the priest. You do need to know about the bloodletting rituals, um, possibly the thorned rope being pulled through the tongue, and that sacrifice of blood representing the power of the patron, the power of the ruling king and queen as exemplified to their people. Next is the Great Serpent Mound. And the most important vocabulary term you have for this one is the word earthwork. An earthwork is a piece of art that is created using the natural environment around it. This is in the form of a giant snake. It reaches one to three feet high and 1,300 feet long. The function is generally unknown, but we know it has something to do with the stars, the sky, the seasons, the sun. Um, and for content, you can put a snake eating the sun. For context, you need to know that this is in Ohio and was made by the Fort Ancient Indians. All right, for Templo Mayor, the main Aztec temple at Tenochtitlan, which if you remember was Mexico City, we're gonna go through the Olmec mask, calendar stone, and Coyolshequi stone individually. 
You do need to remember that this was the center of the Aztec Empire and therefore a metropolis of trade. For the pyramid itself, you need to remember there was two temples on top, one for a god, one for a goddess. First you have the Olmec style mask, which was made of jadeite, which is a long lasting stone uh, and was found in the temple, incorporates both a human and jaguar form in the face. Next up is the calendar stone, which we didn't really cover, but interestingly enough was used for ritualistic sacrifices, part of their religion. It has text and images together and it has a knife in the center, which represents life and death. And finally, you have the Koyolshakwi stone, which would have been painted in bright colors. You do need to remember the goddess body is broken. It was found at the bottom of Templo Mayor, at the bottom of the steps. You do need to know the ritualistic and religious story that goes along with the Koyolshakwi stone. The ruler's feather headdress is a pretty easy work to remember, but you do need to know that it belonged to Montezuma II, and it represents the power of the patron. It was worn during rituals and ceremonies, especially when impersonating a god, and contains 400 feathers. The number 400 represents eternity. It was eventually given to an Austrian king and remains in Austria to this day. For form, of course, feathers, but don't forget that it also contained gold, representing that power that you need to remember. Here we have the city of Cusco, yet another South American city you need to remember. It was the capital of the Inca Empire, and you can remember this from the movie Emperor's New Groove where his name is Cusco. You do need to know it is shaped like a puma, which is still debated whether or not they did that on purpose. You need to know that it has specially built walls, uh, a temple to the sun that was supposedly covered in gold, and an observatory at the top. For context, right, power of the patron represents the entire empire's power. An important thing to know about the city of Cusco is the way they constructed the walls here, which is without mortar in between them, making it easier for the city to withstand earthquakes. And the walls are put together in a very specific way with stones that came from over two miles away. Found inside the city of Cusco in gardens outside of the temple were the maize cobs. You need to know the word repousse, which means that these were metal that was beaten from the other side to make a very detailed shape of the each corn kernel. Uh, for function, make sure you write ensure a good harvest, sort of like a charm. And you do need to know that this is associated with the city of Cusco, so these two works do go together. Your last city in this section is Machu Picchu, found high up in the Peruvian mountains. This is a terraced city, so it has different levels for the different uh, levels of society. At the top would be the elite, and at the bottom would be your farmers. This was built as a summer home for the elite, and you do need to know that it represents the power of the patron of the Incan Empire. And here you have the Al Tsukapu tunic. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. Remember that this is made from camelid fiber and cotton. So one way, the warp side, would be the camelid fiber, which remember is a llama, and the other way, the horizontal weft, would be made out of cotton. For function, this tunic is worn for the elite only, not commoners. And for content, you have many different patterns here to represent the different groups of people from all over the Incan Empire. You need to remember that Altucapu tunics were also made by a very specialized group of women. Not anybody could make these. Um, they were considered almost sacred in their role as weavers of these special tunics. 
This is the bandolier bag for form. You need to know that it has thousands of teeny tiny glass beads which cover a base of cloth. And for function, um, they were worn for fashion, but also served as a pouch to carry uh, items and specifically bullets or ammo from the white colonialists. For content, um, you can put that bag, the sash, you can put the patterns, um, and also put those beads. The beads are a key item here. For context, you need to remember tradition and change because the Native Americans um, changed the way that they were sewing items in order to accommodate those colonialists that were moving into their area. And this is a great symbol of tradition and change in the Indigenous Americas unit. And here's one of my favorite works from this content area, the transformation mask. For form, you can put wood, paint, raffia, and natural fibers. Inside it has a face and outside it has that bird. And remember, it's called the transformation mask because the mask itself is transforming from a bird mask into a human face. And this is a very important male initiation ritual uh, artifact which they would wear as part of that transition from a child into a respected man of the society. For content you can put the geometric patterns on the inside. The mask literally contains a face so you can add that under content as well. And for context you do need to know those religious rituals going into the forest, learning the ways of the people, this whole ceremony with fire and smoke and music. Um, and you can also remember that this is the quack whack a whack uh, native peoples, or as they are referred to in Canada, the First Nations, and you can put on the western coast of Canada. And here you see the Hyde painting of the Sundance, which is attributed to Kotsioko or Katsi Cody, um, a Shoshone Native American who was living on a reservation in Wyoming, um, of course, in North America. For form, you can put paint on elk hide. Uh, for function, put something about tradition and change. Um, Kotsioko was painting this to sell to tourists, so he painted scenes of the Sundance and Buffalo Hunt because they sold better, but also it's part of that tradition and memory of, of the Sundance and of these now considered barbaric rituals of the Native Americans. So you need to put that somewhere, that the Sundance is his memory and his life was changing and this represents his life change as well as the entire Shoshone people's change from living in the plains to living on a very small parcel of land on a reservation. And along those same lines, you have the black on black ceramic vessel, which again represents the almost loss of traditional Native American arts. For form, you can put that this is a coil pot made with clay. Um, and for function, put something about tradition and change. If you remember the activity we did in class where we were Maria and Julian Martinez, um, and we went from making a vessel uh, as a community to making it with only two people. This is that, this represents that change from a community that would make these for everyday use to a small group of people making them to sell to tourists. And that is why this is in the 250. For content, you can put those geometric patterns and traditional glazes which belonged to the Pueblo people.